It is that time, once again, my fellow Chibits, to bring all of you what I will watch of Anime Spring 2017. Can you guys believe it? It is already spring of anime. Like, seriously, it feels like New Year's was just here and the winter season just began. It, it literally feels like it was just a couple weeks ago, but... We're already in the spring season. Like, this year is flying by. You gotta realize this. Once spring is, like, done and all that, we're almost pretty much halfway done with this year. Time really flies when you're watching anime, good or bad. Time really does fly. So, with that being said, let us go over the Annie chart. Link in the description if you want to see it for yourself and see, you know, what you want to watch or what you don't want to watch. If you want to go a little bit deeper into the descriptions and stuff. But let's see what I will watch, what I might be reviewing, and what I will not be reviewing for this anime season. Now, I do know that there's a couple of things coming from this, you know, upcoming season I'm really excited for. Like Attack on Titan, Boku no Hero, you know, Shingeki no Bahamut. You know, there, there's a couple of series I'm looking forward to and I personally know that is coming also. Berserk. But anyways, let us dive straight headfirst into it. Okay, so Alice to Zoroku from JC Staff. The fantasy story begins with a group of young girls who hold a power named Alice's Dream, which allows them to make their imaginations come true. Ooh, that already sounds cool. These girls have been locked up and treated as research subjects. Sana, one of these girls whose uh, specific power includes the ability to ignore the laws of physics and physically manifest anything she can imagine. Huh. That's... Wait, is that an old man in the fucking... Cut? That is. Hmm. That sounds like that would be an interesting series. That really does. Uh, instant... Yeah, I I'm definitely going to do a first impressions on that. You, you look forward to that. Okay, Adam the Beginning. Production IG. They're, they're a good studio. The manga tells the story of what happens up until the birth of Astro Boy and is considered episode zero... Ooh, okay, so here's what I gotta ask. I, I, I know some of you are gonna want to slip my throat for me saying this, but I have not watched Astro Boy. Yes, I know, that's iconic, and it's something I need to watch. It's like a must-watch, you know, anime. But I have not seen Astro Boy. I know how he looks and all that, but I personally haven't seen it. From all of you smart shebits out there that are aware of this and fans of, you know, Astro Boy, can I watch Adam the Beginning without seeing, you know, Astro Boy, the original? But since this seems like it's the origin story or whatever, if anyone can clarify, please let me know in the comments below. Because if I can, I'll gladly watch it. Because, I mean, I'd like to see, you know, Astro Boy. I've never really started and seen it, so just let me know. Let me know in the comments. Okay, so Berserk to... Ugh. Okay, let, let me just say my thoughts here. I am not going to be reviewing Berserk 2. I'm a Berserk fanboy. I I own all the fucking manga. It's like right behind me. It's all that top shelf right there. I, I fucking have all the volumes. Love Berserk. Hate the fucking anime. It's fucking atrocious. It is atrocious. It's literally a stain on the Berserk name. It is absolutely shit. The fucking CGI looks like shit. And it's not even the, you know, the CGI and art and animation. And even the voice acting and the sound effects. That There's a lot of problems there. But what really pisses me off is the adaptation. They don't follow the fucking manga. I was pissed off with how they did it in the first season of this new anime. Season 2 is going to be fucking horrible. They're going to ruin the Berserker armor scene. I just, no. I, I'm sorry. Fucking no. Fucking no. Just fucking no. Give me a proper Berserk anime series. Okay, so, uh, Beyblade Burst God. Uh, I've never watched the previous Beyblade, so obviously going to have to skip. Boku no Hero Academia. Oh, shit. Okay, so I am pretty excited for this season. The first season, Studio Bones, they fucking threw it out of the park. They did a good-ass job with the first season's anime adaptation of Boku no Hero Academia. I was happy to see the series animated, and I was happy to see how good of a job Studio Bones did when it came to Boku no Hero Academia. And so I'm going to assume they're going to do another good job with this upcoming season of Boku no Hero Academia. I don't have any doubts or any worries about the series adaptation, and I don't have really any doubts for, you know, probably the art and animation department either, because the first fucking season looked beautiful, and and judging by how there's been a larger increase in the fan base since the first season, and the manga was already popular to begin with, I can already imagine that, you know, season 2 is going to look even better, and it's going to just be a beautiful adaptation. But I want to tell you right now, as a manga reader, what makes me excited for this season is, is because I'm going to get to see the best villain. The best villain of this series. My personal favorite villain. That 
is the foundation block for Boku no Hero Academia's entire plot. I'm telling you right now, get hyped for this upcoming season because if they adapt the best villain, oh my god, that those episodes are going to be fantastic. There's going to be tremendous coverage probably on this season, Boku no Hero Academia. And it's probably going to give Attack on Titan a run for its money in terms of just epic episodes just because of how awesome the villain is of this upcoming, you know, season. Okay, so, uh, obviously, yeah, I'm going to be, you know, reviewing Boku no Hero, just to clarify, FYI. Okay, so, Boruto, Naruto, Next Generation, no, like I've already said many times in the past, when I finished the manga and I finished the anime and I saw, like, the Naruto and Sasuke fight, I... I was done with Naruto. I was happy with what I had. I was satisfied with the story. I was satisfied with what I had. I finally got to see it concluded. And so I don't need to see any more. I don't need to see the next generation. I don't need to see Boruto. So no, I'm not going to be watching Boruto or doing reviews or anything like that. I've already said my piece with the series. It's not that I hate Naruto. It just, I, I'm done with it because I finished the original. Okay, Buso Shoujo. Machi, I might even say that full fucking name. Okay, the battle action story follows Fudo Nomura, who transfers to a school where girls carry weapons to rule mercilessly over the boys. So it's S and M type series. Shortly after transferring, he becomes a target of Rin, a member of the Five Ruling Swords that commands the school. In order, in order, wait, is that bad English? In order, break. In or, it's supposed to be in order to. Wow, any chart, fix your shit. Okay, in order. To break free, he must defeat the five ruling swords. That sounds generic as fuck. I'm just gonna say. That sounds generic as fuck. Now, I don't know. It's by Silverlink. They they do some good stuff every so often. I'm not gonna say they're bad. But just the story in general sounds generic as fuck. I could be wrong there. That's just my two cents on just the description. Just the way the description sounds. It just sounds pretty generic and the cover isn't really screaming that it's anything brand new either or original just by the way it looks but looks can be deceiving i mean look i mean not many people thought re-zero was gonna be fucking epic i mean besides the actual light novel readers and wet novel readers because it flew under the radar everybody thought it was gonna be shit or something but look how that turned out and i don't know it could turn out to be good or not i have no idea we'll see but most likely i'm not gonna review it just well i'll check out the first episode i'm not gonna promise i'm gonna do a first impressions but well, we'll see. Okay, Clockwork Planet. I've heard a little bit about this series. I've been told to expect to ha have this be a very good series from a couple of fans that I've heard about and been telling me, like, Chibi, you need to watch Clockwork Planet. So uh, this has already been on my radar for a little bit now because I've been told about the title. It's going to be a good series. So let's see what it's about. Uh, Naoto's a high school dropout and brilliant amateur tinkerer. He lives in a world that has been overexploited that the entire surface has become one vast machine. Ooh. So you're saying like the entirety of Earth has become a machine. Hmm. When a box crashes into his home containing a female. Oh, that sounds generic now. I like the setting of the world, but a female come crashing in and all that. Hmm. I'll give it a first impressions. It says drama, fantasy, romance, sci-fi. Hmm, romance and drama. Hmm. I'll give it a first impressions. It's been on my radar. I'll see how it is. It looks good by the cover, just the picture alone, but also description sounds good. I I'm not the biggest fan of how a female just drops into a dude's room or whatever, or into his home or whatever, but we'll see where it goes. Uh, we'll definitely see how it is. So I'll, I'll give it a first impressions. Okay, so, uh, Duel Masters 2017, a new series to, no, nah, I haven't seen it, okay, um, next, Dungeon, wait, Dungeon Need to, wait, is this fucking Dungeon Girl? Sword Princess, it is, Sword Princess, I, wait, is this a season two? Doesn't say it. I guess Sword Princess I, uh, Eyes. Uh, today, once again, the strongest female swordsman heads to the giant labyrinth known as the dungeon, along with her allies on the 50th floor, where mysteries and threats such as decayed dragon corpses that crumbled ash in a regular. I I'm confused. Is this a season two or is it a s prequel spinoff? I'm confused. It's obviously Dungeon Girl. Hmm. 
I'll have to look into that. I'll, I'll give it a first impressions. I saw the original anime, so I'll give it a first impressions. I'm going to assume I can watch it. It's by the same studio, JC Staff. I'm assuming I can. It's probably a prequel or some form of spinoff, judging by how it's focusing on her instead of the main characters. So, yeah, I'll, I'll give that to first impressions. Uh, Arrow Manga... Ah! This series. Okay, so... Uh, if I am correct, I could be wrong here, don't quote me on this, but if I'm correct, Arrow Manga Sensei is by the same writer of Orimo, and I know Orimo's entire anime... Oh, foo, that season two conclusion. Ugh. Like, mm, 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 But, um... This, uh, I think this is by the same writer. If I'm correct. I could be wrong there. Don't quote me on that. But I think this is by the same writer. And I have been told that this work is pretty interesting and good. So I'll, I'll definitely be giving this a first impression. So let me see what it's about. The new sibling ro romantic comedy. Oh yeah, it's automatically screaming si uh, similarities to Orimo. Revolves around Masamune Izumi, a light novel author in high school. Masamune's little sister, Sagiri, a shutting girl who hasn't left her room for an entire... Oh, so it's a neat series. Hmm. Or uh, Hikikimori or however you say that. I forget how you pronounce that entire name. Let's see. She even forces her brother to make and bring her meals when she stomps the floor. Masamune wants his sister to leave her room because the two of them are each other's only f Oh, so they have no parents. Hmm. Uh, I'll give it a first impression. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, frame Arms Girl. The anime story begins with Al opens a package that arrives at her doorstep. Inside the package is... Gorai, a frame arms girl, a small robot capable of in That reminds me of, uh, what's that one series I reviewed a long time ago? It was like a year or two ago, maybe two years ago. I reviewed this series called, like, Buzo Shinki or whatever it's called. It was like a, it was also like little frame action figure girls or whatever. I forget what that series is called. Buzo, it started with B. It was like Shinki something Shiggy or whatever, but it was like, bu uh, like, B something. And this sounds very similar. Inside the package is Gurai, a frame arms girl, a small robot capable of independent movement. Gurai is a newly developed prototype, a frame arms girl equipped with an artificial self and advanced AI that gives her a personality. I uh, was the only one that has activated her. Uh, gather both battle data and emotions. It sounds different from what I have seen recently, but I've seen a series like that and it didn't really go anywhere, so I don't know. Hmm. I'll... I'm on the fence about that one. You guys think uh, you want me to, you know, talk about this series? I'm going to ask. If there's any fans out there that's watching this video, just let me know. You you think that's, you know, worth my time or not? Let me know. Okay, let's go down. Fuku Noise. Okay, the manga tells a rom romance story with the themes of music x one-sided... Oh, shit. So we have, like, a scum's wish going on here. one side love. Nino, a girl who loves singing, made a childhood promise with her first crush, Momo, and song opposing Yuzu to someday find her voice. The three went, uh, went their separate ways, but Nino kept her promise and continued to sing. Years later, the three are now in high school students, and Nino is drawn into the world of band clubs. So it's a band club series. Hmm. By Burning Space, they're a good studio as well. Uh, I'll check it out. I won't promise the first impressions. I'll check it out, though. Future Card Buddy Fights. I haven't seen the previous one, so skip. Gen no Guardian. Based on the Chinese... Ooh, so it's based on a Manwa. Hmm. I'll check it out just because I want to support Manwa, but the previous, like, Chinese anime adaptations and stuff, they've been absolute shit, like, from what I've seen previous seasons, but I'll check out Gen no Guardian just because it's based on a Manwa. That, that's the only reason I want to check it out, and we'll see, I'll see if I like it. I'll, I'll definitely check that out. What's it about, though? Let's see, a webcomic series, Chinese webcomic series, Yin Ji Zhou Mu Rin. Oh, that's just a lot, okay. But he, wait, is that a full name? Oh, well, okay. Let's, uh, so again, may be poor, but he is one of the best online video game players. This identity, however, is unknown to all except for Rikule. Suigen's so uh, classmate, she delivers a mysterious mobile device to Suigen, so but before being able to explain herself, Rikule is kidnapped, and Suigen so unwittingly finds himself wrapped up in a series of problematic... Uh, let me, let me scroll down, please. Let me scroll down, please. Series of problematic circumstances. Searching for a way to save her, he accidentally act. Oh, 
fuck. Okay, so it's pretty much like he saves a girl or whatever. It sounds kind of cliche, but like I said, I'll check it out just because it's based on a monologue. That, that's the whole reason. Uh, Grand Blue... F this has also been mentioned to me quite a few times. Grand Blue Fantasy. I'm going to be checking this out and definitely doing a first impressions. I've been told that Grand Blue Fantasy is something I need to keep my eyes on. Grand Blue Fantasy The Animation. Video game developer... Uh, let's see, announced during the Tokyo Game Show on Thursday. Smartphone game will receive... It's based on a smartphone game. I don't know if I'll... Mm, the first two episodes premiered on January 21st as a special. Oh, is it though? Oh, so it is that series. Okay, so the first... I need to watch... Oh, so I'll have to probably watch those first two episodes. Okay, I'll, I'll check them out then. Grand Blue Fantasy The Animation, though. I'll check it out. I've been told that I need to look into this series because it's apparently pretty damn good, so we'll see where it goes. I'll check out Grand Blue Fantasy. Um, Hinako, yeah, Hinako Note. Hinako is port speaking, lives in... What the fuck? She wants to improve her speech to be able to talk to people freely. So in high school, she, search, she transfers schools to Tokyo and plans to join a theater club. And a girl who eats books li Wait, what? A girl who eats books lives there. What the shit? A girl who eat. Am I reading that right? When she arrives, it turns out her boarding house is a secondhand bookstore, and a girl who eats books lives... I will check it out just because of that last sentence. That sounds like something that'd be fucking hilarious. It is a comedy slice life, so I'll check it out. Um, I machines are the general term for robots that operate in extreme environments. While Alliance Academy student Maya Mikuri is in the middle of operating an I machine, she gets involved in an incident with pirates. Ooh, a pirate? Space pirate series. Hmm. And ends up serving as a crew member on an excavation company spaceship. Sci-fi mech. Ooh, that does sound pretty interesting. I'm going to give a first impression on that. That sounds good. Idle Time, not interested. Kabuki Boo, the series revolves around Kurugo, a high school student who loves Kabuki so much that it's annoying. Kurugo yearns to perform Kabuki as a part of a club at his school, but currently his school doesn't have a Kabuki club, so... Uh, what? What's Kabuki? I, I, what, what the fuck is Kabuki? I... I, I, I... I'm too lazy to search up, but what the fuck is Kabuki? So, Kurogo sets out to create a Kabuki club, and his first order of business is gathering Studio Dean. Mm. Probably gonna skip. Probably gonna skip that. Uh, Kyokai no Rene, season three. Damn, it's got three seasons? Oh, shit. I haven't watched this in season one, but nah, I can't watch that. Sixth season of Natsume. Oh, yes, this series. Oh, man. You don't even want to know how many have told me to get my ass up and start fucking watching the previous five seasons of this series not to me it's been so many people recommending this series i, I haven't seen it though so i can't review it um uh, let's see oh shit uh, shitsu uh kyoshi haine hopefully i said that right let's see accepting the post of royal tutor at the court of the king of i cannot pronounce that holy fuck Okay, uh, Hein is a little professor with a big job ahead. Each of the kingdom's four princes of a rather distinct personality. Does their diminutive new structure how it takes the lead down some learning? It's a comedy of educational... Hmm. So it's an educational comedy series. I'll give it a shot. It sounds different so far from everything else I've seen from this season. I'll give that one a shot, too. And, I mean, hey, educational comedy sounds like it would be pretty good. I mean, look at Demichon. Uh, let's see, Recre ah, Recreators, I have heard something about this series, I can't remember what it's about, but I've been told also to look into this series and also watch it, I've been told it's gonna be fucking amazing. Let's see, humans have created many stories, joy, sadness, anger, deep, emotion. Stories shake our emotions and fascinate us, however, these are the only thoughts of bystanders, but what if the characters in the story have, the characters in the story have intentions? To them, we are godlike existences for bringing their story into the world. Our world has changed. What? Well, you're telling me, like, books are written or whatever, stories are written, and then they're brought into the real world? That sounds like Inkheart. 
That straight up sounds like fucking Inca. Yo, I, that sounds like that's going to be one of my favorites. Besides, you know, what I expect to be good. You know, Attack on Titan, Boku no Hero and stuff. That sounds fucking amazing. Oh, yeah. Definite watch. Recreators. Okay, so going down. Rinai Bokun. The story begins when Guri, an angel with mysterious items which turns any two people to kiss into a couple, appears before a high school boy named uh, Seiji. However, there's a yandere high school girl named Akane who loves Seiji. Comedy, romance, supernatural. Hmm, a yandere. I like yandere's. You know, I'll, I don't promise a first impressions, but I'll definitely look into it. The second season of Relu. I haven't seen the first one, so can't watch that. Roku Denshi. Ooh, that cover looks like trash. Okay, in the action fan. Ooh, this already is starting to sound cliche. In the action fantasy story, Gurin is a part time teacher at a magic school who is inclined. Oh, this already sounds bad and cliche. It's based, yeah, it's based on a light novel, too. Shit. It's probably one of those things. Who is inclined to write self study on the blackboard and then take a nap? One of his students. Sistina gets angry and challenges him into a duel and he's easily defeated. However, when a terrible incident threatens the school, Gurren shows intense dedication to protecting his students. It sounds cliche as fuck. It sounds cliche as fuck. Skip. Uh, Sena. Ooh, Sena is coming in. Yo, I fucking love the first season. Instant watch. I don't know if I'll review it, but I am definitely watching that. That was a fucking awesome first season. I loved it so much. So yeah, definitely watch on that one. Let's see, so, uh, saw Greta, Grata, reset. Oh, how are you say that? Let's see. Based on a light novel, the novel story is set in a town called Sakurata, where almost half the population possess some form of special powers. The story centers on two high school students. K, uh, Asai has the ability to perfectly remember anything he sees and hear. Oh wow, so it's like index kind of. While Misora. Haruki can turn back or reset time for a maximum of three days. So it's going to be a time reset series. Hmm. Both students are members of their school service club. That sounds like that would be a... Oh, it's by David Production? FYI, David Production is the studio that works on JoJo. Huh. That sounds like that has the potential to be the hidden gem of the season or the fucking sleeper hit. That, that's what that sounds like to me, this series. I'm actually even more interested in this series than Recreators now, just because of David Productions studio working up. Hmm. Gonna look into that. Definitely. Sakura Quest PA Works. The story centers on five girls who work on a tour. Oh, it's not sounding already interesting at all. The town revives its micro nation tourism program, which uh, originated from a nationwide movement during Japan's bubble economy. Ooh, it's got economics, so. And hires the five girls as monarchs, tourism ambassadors. The anime will depict one year in their jobs in the tourism industry and show how they change and grow. This sounds like a fucking advertisement. Uh, probably gonna skip that. Let's see, Seikai Suru Kado. Toei Animation. Okay. Toei Animation Original C. Ooh, ooh, CG Toei Animation. Ooh, ooh. That sounds like that's going to be atrocious. <laughs> that sounds like that's going to be atrocious. Jesus. Toei Animation and CG. Mm -mm. Let's see, okay. Let's see, just, let's see what it's about, though. It, it, let's just see. Let's see, Koji. Cabinet Officer Director General for Policy Planning is at Haneda Airport for a business trip. While the plane is on the runway, a giant structure suddenly appears out of thin air. The plane carrying Shindo and 251 passengers is taken undamaged inside the giant structure. Huh. Doesn't have anything that really stands out. I don't know. I might just check it out just to see how bad the CGI looks. I wonder if it's worse than Berserk CGI. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious. I, I'm truly curious. I'm I'm truly curious if, you know, the CGI of this series will be worse than Berserk's. I might check it out just for that for comparison reasons. Uh, Shigeki no Bahamut, the Virgin Soul. Studio Mappa. I have been waiting so fucking long for a continuation of this series. Shigeki no Bahamut. I loved the first season. If you have not watched Shingeki no Bahamut, stop what you're doing and go watch the first season. It was such a fantastic series. A really, really good anime series. I loved everything about it. 
And I'm just going to say right now, if you have not seen Shingeki no Bahamut, stop this video. Don't even need to come back. Go watch it. It's so good. Season 2 coming. Oh my god, it's going to be fucking excited. I'm so excited. I'm fucking excited for that. Yes, I am ready. Definite reviews on that because I reviewed the first season. Loved it. Okay, so Attack on Titan, obviously, like, obviously I'm going to review it. I, you know, love the fucking series. I haven't reviewed the latest chapters of the manga, I know, because I've been holding off reviewing on it because I want to see if this anime might surpass... You know, the manga. I don't know. They might want to go longer than 20-something episodes since they waited so fucking long to animate the series. Who knows? So, I mean, it just depends. But, uh, yeah, obviously, I'm going to review Attack on Titan. It's like one of the most anticipated series of the entire season. It, it really is. So, obvious watch and review. Okay, Shumatsu Nani. 500 years have passed since the humans went extinct. Since humans went extinct at the hands of the fearsome and mysterious beast, their surviving races now make their home up on floating islands in the sky. Ooh, the setting already sounds interesting. Out of reach of all but the most mobile of beasts, so flying dragons and shit, I'm assuming. Only a small group of young girls, the leprechaun- What? A small group of young girls, the leprechauns, can wield the ancient weapons needed to fend off invasion from these- What? What? <laughs> Fucking leprechaun? Yo, I'm gonna watch it just to see fucking leprechauns, jeez. Oh yeah, insta-watch. Okay, so Sin Nanasu no Taizai. In the story, the prideful archangel Lucifer disobeys God and is cast into the lowest level of hell. As a... Ooh. Hell as a fallen angel on her... Wait, on her? Lucifer's a her in this? Okay. On her way to hell, Lucifer happens to meet a high school girl on Earth named... Oh, this is sounding like a fucking fan service -y type series. Mm. In hell, Lucifer meets Leviathan. Leviathan explains to Lucifer about the seven deadly sins. The seven deadly sins, rulers of hell. Uh, it sounds generic and just fan service. That's... The opi on the cover just straight up looks like it's just screaming fan service. Like, that's all the series is about. Probably gonna skip that. Uh, uh, there's more things I could be doing with my time. Uh, Star Moo 2. I haven't seen the first one, so can't watch it. Snack World. <laughs> what? What? Anime of the season, am I right? But, okay, jokes aside. The hyper-casual fantasy is set in Snack World, a seemingly traditional fantasy world, except it has convenient store smartphones and other elements of modern world. That, no, that looks like absolute shit. That looks like absolute fucking shit. Oh yeah, Tomika Hyper Rescue Drive. That also looks like shit. No. Uh, Sugumomo! Oh yes, this series, I'm not even gonna read it, I wanna just, you know... I want to go in completely fresh. I, this series has been recommended a lot. A lot of Chibits have sent me letters and fan mail in my fan mail videos. So I, I'm going to watch Sugumomo just because of how much it's been recommended. I've been told to expect, you know, the series to be pretty good. I'll give it a watch. I, I promised a while back to the Chibit that sent me constant letters about the series. I'm going to watch Sugumomo. Uh, Sukiga Akire. The series focuses on characters Akane and Kotaro, two th third year middle school students who become classmates for the first time. The series will depict each character's growth and connection to the people around them, such as classmates. Ah, oh, by Studio Phil. Hmm. This series sounds like it's gonna be. It, it, it sounds like a Seinen. A school life, slice of life Seinen series that's probably gonna have drama and some serious stuff going on. That sounds like my type of series, so I'll watch that. Uh, Twin Angels Break already looks boring as fuck, Skip. Uh, let's see, Ucho Ten, haven't seen the first season, can't watch that. Warda, Salesman New. Each episode follows Fukuzo Moguro, a traveling salesman and his current customer. So it's episodic. Mogro deals in things that give his customers their heart's desires, and once his deals are made and their unhealthy desires are satisfied... Mogro's customers are often left with terrible repercussions, especially if they break the rules of his deal. Ooh. I know it's going to be episodic, but that sounds like that would have some really good stuff. I mean, look at Mushishi. Hmm. 
I'll watch it. I don't know if I'll review it. Probably not, but I'll definitely watch it. It sounds like something I would like. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Mm, I haven't seen the previous ones. Can't watch that. Uh, Zero Kara. Oh, yes, I've been seeing a lot of this because I got confused when I saw this series because I thought it was, you know, freaking ReZero. Uh, Zero Kara Hajimeru. Let's see, the Grimoire Fantasy series follows a witch named Zero who is ignorant of the world and a half-beast, half-human mercenary who longs to be human. Witches who practice sorcery exist in the world, however, in this era, no one knows about the art and study of witchcraft. Zero is going on a journey to search for a magical tome called the Book of Zero that hides a power that can destroy the world. By Studio White? Wow! FYI, you know... What? Wow! Studio White Fox is working... Wasn't it White Fox that worked on ReZero? What are the chances that Studio White Fox would be doing another series that sounds very similar to ReZero? Just, hmm. I'm looking forward to that. I'll definitely give that one a watch, just because it's White Fox, but also how close it sounds to ReZero. It's, they might put a lot of effort into this like they did ReZero, so I'll give that a watch. Okay, so Leftovers. Cochin Pa... The second season, I haven't seen it, not watching it. Little Witch Academia, obviously, I already knew it was going to be 20-something episodes. Going to continue watching that. The third season of Yo! Mushy Pedal, been watching that. Just don't review it anymore because, like I said, nobody really cared about the videos, so I just stopped doing videos on it. So, yeah. But, um, Little Witch Academia, I'm glad to see that's continuing. And Yo! Mushy Pedal. Okay, so TV shorts next season. We have 100% Pascal Sensei, Skip... Uh, skip the next. Boo Boo, Skip, Cinderella Girls, uh, Skip, Kinkai, Bacho Otome, Skip, Love Kome, Skip, Makaruna, Skip, Nobu, I haven't seen the previous one, Skip, Skip, Puri Puri, Skip, Roommate, ML version, spin off, I want Skip. Ooh, that, what's that cover? The anime will be an omnibus short format that will tell stories of the strange and bizarre in our world, including UFOs. Ooh. Huh. That sounds cool. That sounds cool. I like the art, too, of the cover. Go watch that. Uh, Shonen, Ashibe, haven't seen the previous, so skip. Soro. Ah! Saitama, in a romance series. <laughs> yeah, I've already seen pictures of this. I've already seen a shit ton of pictures on this series right here. I, I, I have seen so much on this series. Oh yeah, I'll do a first impressions on that. Because I have been told that series is fucking hilarious. And it's basically Saitama... And romance or something. That's what I've heard. I, I don't know. So, we'll see. I'll give that a watch, though. Okay, Biohazard, Resident Evil movie. I haven't seen the previous one, so, eh. Blame movie. Ooh, Blame's getting a movie? Hmm. Hmm. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to a Blame movie. That sounds like that's gonna be fucking badass as hell. Like Blame. Detective Conan, I uh, haven't seen the previous stuff, so no, Fairy Tale. Oh, let the series die already, please. Fairy Tale, Mahoka. That shit is still. Co oh my god. Oh my god. Why? Why does this shit continue to come out in Spice of Wolf? God, mm, that shit makes me so pissed off. Like, that is. Oh. Mahoka is such a shit fucking series. Fuck, man. So fucking trash. Why does that shit continue to get fucking anime movies and shit? Let it die. Give me fucking Spice and Wolf instead. Let's see. Yoka Suguru. The story plays in a harbor town where a gloomy middle school student named Kai meets a mermaid named Wu. Sounds like a lot like Ponyo. It's a movie, though. Sounds like it'd be a good movie. Uh, Yoru, the protagonist, falls in love with Otome, his junior in college club, and struggles daily to be noticed by her. Oh, notice me, senpai. However, Kurokami no Otome is a naive and unsophisticated and is completely indifferent to him. Hmm. Sounds like a cool movie as well. 
Uh, Yuki Yuna movie. I haven't seen the series, so no, I can't, uh, can't watch it. Oh, now we're getting OVA. So, Blue Exorcist is getting an OVA. Brave Witches is getting an OVA. Days is getting an OVA. High School Fleet is getting one. What the fuck is High School Fleet? Um, Gundam Thunderbolt 2 OVA. Hmm, this, wait, the second season of Thunderbolt. Okay. Uh, Luna Ton. I haven't seen that. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Uh, Monster Strike. I haven't seen Monster Strike. Let's see. Yume. I haven't seen that either. So, n no OVAs I'm really interested in besides Blue Exorcist. Uh, that's, that's it. Okay, so that is the chart of Spring 2017. So, let, let's go through what I think is going to be very good. Alice sounds like this is going to be good. Alice to Zo 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 Roku. Well, couldn't speak. Alice to Zoroku sounds like that would be a good series. Uh, let's see. Clockwork Planet has the potential. Obviously, Boku no Hero Academia is going to be amazing. The Hundred Girls is probably going to be very fun and entertaining, just like the previous one was. Arrow Manga Sensei could be absolute fucking garbage or be oddly enjoyable. Like, it's so bad it's good. Uh, let's see. Grand Blue Fantasy. I've heard some good shit about this, so I'll check that out. Henneko seems like that Slice of Life series. I'll make you feel good and just have a good smile. Um, let's see. Obviously, I know many are going to be happy about this series and just be jumping for joy, but I haven't seen it, but I know many are going to be happy about that. Uh, Recreators, potential to be anime of the season, besides, you know, continuations and stuff. That, that has potential. Uh, let's see. That This is going to be fun season two to watch. Uh, let's see. This, this is probably the sleeper hit right here. This is probably, like, this series right here probably is the one that's going to be, like, one of the best of the season. I, I'm calling it right now. Just because David production, but also just because the plot and all that. It just sounds like a good series. Um, let's see. Shingeki no Bahama going to be fucking amazing. Season 2. Attack on Titan Season 2 going to be great. This sounds cool and different as well. That, that, that automatically screams different compared to everything else. So, definitely looking forward to that one. Fan service shit. Nope. Um, let's see. Sounds also good. This sounds like one of those series that's going to be like March Comes in Like a Lion. Not like the same story, but like on a mature level, like March Comes in Like a Lion. That's what this sounds like right here. This has been recommended so much to me, so obvious watch. This by White Fox, same studio that did, you know, ReZero, so obvious watch is obvious. So, I mean, there's some pretty good stuff from the season. There is some pretty good stuff. It's still better than, you know, from uh, Fall. Fall of anime 2016. Like, that, that shit was... Oh, God. That that was trash. Trash season. So, yeah. Looking like a good season. There, there, there's some trash here and there. But, I mean, overall, it's looking like a good season of anime. I, I'm looking forward to the continuations. And, yeah. So, that's about it. What are you guys looking forward to? What are you not looking forward to? If there's anything I said I was going to skip and you guys want me to watch it, just let me know in the comments below. And if there's enough people recommending me to, you know, change my opinion on it and you, you at least give it a try... I'll check it out. We'll see. So, y'all have a wonderful day or nights wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.